please. <clears throat> Father God, we just thank you so much that you hear our prayers. I thank you that you know how to deal with us when we are struggling, but also that you've given us such great hope, such blessed assurance. So guide and direct in this service today. May it be honoring to you. Bless Brother John as he shares from the Word of God today. May it be just exactly what we need to hear. I pray for the family today, for each one of us, as we remember the life of Vernon. May it bring to our hearts great memories. So thank you for, in advance for how you're going to care for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Elva Vernon Todd Hunter, 89, of Lowell, Arkansas, died Saturday night, November the 23rd, 2019. <clears throat> he was born September the 10th, 1930, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, to Ed and Ruby Mae Smith Todd Hunter. He proudly served in the U.S. Army. Vernon is survi survived by his wife, Vida, two daughters, Sharon and Lavona, one son, Dwayne, seven grandchildren, and 15 great-grandchildren. <clears throat> I want to share on behalf of the family just a few, a few memories of Vernon. This would be in behalf of the family, and of course, as I share, many of you will think of numerous memories that will come to your mind. <clears throat> I thought about this from Psalm 116 and verse 15, the Bible teaches us that precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. The death itself is not so precious, but we know that he has gone from here to the glories of heaven. God sustains us through our time of loss. <clears throat> we have memories that bring tears, but also lots of laughter, and most of all, peace. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 13, we sorrow not like those who don't have any hope. We do have hope. Vernon is home with Jesus and other loved ones and all who receive Jesus as Savior will be with him again forever. Now just a few thoughts very quickly. <clears throat> when Vine and Vernon were living in Wichita and they would come home, uh, Vernon always wanted to go fishing and he was real kind to ask me to go with him. So I, I remember going fishing with Vernon a lot of times. I enjoyed his friendship. We had a, a lot of good times talking together. <clears throat> this story that he has told numerous times about the very first bowling Christmas that we had because he was an only child, he said, so many presents and so many people. <laughs> Vernon had a good sense of humor. He loved to tell stories and he loved to have fun. On several of our bowling family trips, he was our videographer. He, he was good at taking the video as well as sharing some thoughts. He and Vida were a hardworking team <clears throat> and very helpful to other people. The last 10 years have been difficult for Vernon, but it just continued on. They visited Gene and I in our church in Missouri when we were at that time having our Christmas open house. So they told Gene and me to just go and visit with the people. They went in the kitchen did all the preparation and the serving of people. That's how they were to us. <clears throat> they also came when Gene's father passed away, they came to, to their home, to uh, Rufus and Lottie's home and prepared a lunch meal for that day. I also remember in the middle to late 1990s, <clears throat> I don't remember exactly the year, but our Boland family trip took us to Wyoming. Joanne and Bill were the host and hostess, some of us took a day trip and Vernon and I were riding together that day and he wanted to talk. So he said with uh, <clears throat> teary eyes, he said, I've wasted some of my years from the Lord, but now I'm back and everything is okay. He had peace with the Lord. Served the Lord faithfully from that time on. Vida and Vernon invited Gene and me to church, Lakeview Baptist and church was downtown we were saved there in August of 1965, so we're thankful for them. At that time, he was also a Sunday school teacher. Later, when I obeyed the call to preach, Vernon gave me his Matthew Henry commentary with some encouraging autographs in it. Just a few memories of Vernon Todd Hunter.
Well, you know what's interesting when um, <clears throat> when the family asks you to do something, you're you're always glad to, uh, e except for this one. <laughs> <laughs> but Sharon caught me. Uh, I got that call Saturday, well, second Sunday morning, I guess, and went up to the nursing home and had a good cry with the family there and loved on them a bit. And Sharon said, well, I know what songs Daddy wants at his funeral. I said, glory to God, let me know what they are. And the first one to come out of her mouth um, was Battle Hymn of the Republic. And that's okay. Um, but I don't know how to play Battle Hymn of the Republic. <laughs> And I taught Adam, so I, ago. I think it's the blind leading the blind. So let me tell you, <clears throat> if we're going to be dropped off the cliff, you guys are going to be falling with us. <laughs> so the words are on the screen, and I've, um, I've dumbed it down just as far as I can. So why don't we do this for Vernon? Is that all right? And, and you know it. You know it. And so let's sing it, okay? Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath were stored. He has loosed the faithful light of his terrible swift sword. Is the truth is a marching on. Here we go. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. You did a pretty good job on that. <clears throat> We're going to do another one here that I think is real good. In the beauty. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea. With the glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. And he died to make men holy. Let us live to make men free. While God is a marching on glory, glory. did good. You'll be seated. You might as well stand up here. We won't be with this in a minute. Okay. We're going to do another one, but um, <clears throat> so I got this letter on my email from Sharon. It's not unusual to get that from families. Would you add this to the sermon or that? It's usually memories, but um, I got this from Sharon and I thought it just deserved to be read verbatim. Um, uh, as ornery as this little girl is, she's got the biggest heart you've ever seen, and uh, she writes really good things, and so I thought I'd just read it. It was about 11 p.m. Saturday night. Mom was resting, and I was sitting by my daddy's side. I told him we loved him, and we'd be okay. I sat back down in the chair beside him. His breathing was so labored, um, it was so labored, it was hard to hear him. So I decided to look up the songs that we were going to sing at the service. So in my off-key voice, I sang the battle hymn of the Republic, standing on the promises, then I sang I'll Fly Away. By the way, I talked to the nurses and all down there at the Innisfree Nursing Home. They agreed with uh, all of that. They, they thought it was some turkeys that were making noises, but then they, they realized it was you singing, so that was okay. <laughs> Then I sang, I'll fly away. And then to the chagrin of everybody on her floor, she sang it a little louder. Daddy's breathing got very shallow. I got up, stood beside his bed, rubbing his chest, telling him we'd be okay, that I'd make sure and take care of the family, and that I loved him. I told him he was going to be at the most awesome church service ever. And by the way, you're here for it. Here in a little bit because... Um, it was now almost midnight. I asked God to please take him. 
Daddy took another very shallow breath for the last time. This was the last minutes I spent with my daddy. I know this may sound like just a story, but it was real, and the presence of God was real. Uh, something I'll never forget. <clears throat> it's so hard, but my daddy is in glory and happy, and I can just hear him say, um, that, that's enough of those tears. I'm good. And I can see him saying that as well, and can't you as well. <clears throat> Amen. All right, here's another one that, uh, now I know you'll know this one. You don't have to stand, but you can if you want to. And um, <clears throat> this one I can play a little bit better. Ready? Yep. Some glad morning when this life is over, I fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I fly away. Come on, let's sing it now. now. I don't know if Vernon could sing or not. I just know he always moved his mouth a lot. He sat right there. And um, I spoke to Brother Vernon Friday, this past Friday morning, and in the conversation I asked him if he's ready to go to heaven. He said, the, he said you betcha, you betcha. And, and that, was, that was Vernon. Uh, he, his lifestyle exhibited that in everything he did. I, I always told Brother Vernon, uh, the, 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 the week before that, or maybe later, or earlier that week, I went in and I, I, I saw uh, Miss Biden. She was playing bingo. <laughs> and uh, so I said, well, I'm going to go on down and visit Brother Vernon for a minute. And she said, that's fine. And I think she wanted me to go away because she was winning, I think, at bingo. So it's time for me to go. But uh, no, that's not true. She always hugged my neck and was glad to see me. And had to give me a big old kiss on the cheek. And um, I told her when I got here today, she needed going back to the back and make me a coconut cream pie. <laughs> Be all right. So I go, anyway, I go to Brother Vernon's room, and, uh, and I pat him on the, on the, on the arm there, and, and he wakes up a little bit. And, 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 and you got to understand, you know, Brother Vernon never met a person that he didn't like. He, he just was a very personable kind of guy. And so we began to talk, and I began to talk about how good the Lord was. And he began to talk about how good the Lord was. And we got five minutes into this conversation. He looked up at me, and he smiled, and he says, listen, I am so embarrassed, but I need to ask you a question. And I said, well, Brother Vernon, you can ask me anything. He said, who are you? <laughs> I'm your preacher. My brother Johnny. Don't you recognize me? And he goes, no. <laughs> I think he did. But you know what? It didn't matter if he did or if he didn't because he treated a stranger the same way he treated somebody that he'd known all his life because of what was inside of him. Because I'm going to tell you this, guys, and, and I've heard it time and time again, when it really boils down to everything else, and, and um, Perry Grimsley's daddy used to say this, when you squeeze somebody and see what comes out, that's the real man. And so when you, when you, when you, uh, when Brother Vernon got squeezed Saturday night, all that came out was Jesus, because that was what was inside of him. So I got to think about that statement, though, and it's a statement that we should all ask ourselves, are you ready to go? 
are you ready to go? Another thing that Sharon and Miss Vida both told me, and when you preach this funeral, we don't want you to preach some little mamby pamby funeral sermon. We want to hear about Jesus. I said, that's that good. That's all I know to do. And I was telling some people yesterday at Brother Jack's funeral, these funerals are not difficult to preach. You get up and you brag on Jesus for a little while and you sit down. Is that great? So today we're going to brag on Jesus. Because Jesus was the one that made, like Max said, Jesus was the one that made a difference in, in uh, Bernie's life. But I, I can tell you that uh, I, I've never met a, a guy uh, like, like Brother Bernie. Uh, he, he was always, when you came in, to console him. When you came in to make him feel better about his last days, you left with him making you feel better about his last days. When, when, when you come in to him, and I remember for years and years, I would go to their house and listen, I would always try to go right at lunchtime because I, and then, because I knew they were going to have something good to eat, right? So I always said I went to break bread with them, but the bread I went to break was either cornbread or biscuits, right? And it was always good. It was chicken fried steak, and it was this, and it was that, and it was stuff out of the garden. And when you left, Brother Vernon would say, hey, do you like that stuff? Whether it be, I don't know what they called it, but it was stuff in a jar, and it was made with peppers and all these different things, right? And so when you left... Yeah, hey, go out there to the root cellar and, and, and out there in that little building and, and go in there and get what you want. Just There's all in there. Just get something. I didn't like all that stuff, but I didn't tell him. I went out there and got me a jar and took it home, right? You just didn't want to let those burn down. You just, when you'd go in, before you left his house, Sometimes I would get up and I would forget to pray before I left the house. I'd get up out of the chair. I would have been there for a while. And I'm starting toward the door. Brother Vernon says, hey. Yes, sir. You forgot to pray. I said, oh, how could I forget that? If I'd go next to their two recliners sitting there and I'd get down on my knees and I'd grab one by one hand and one by the other and we'd pray. But can I tell you something? In the last few months before Brother Vernon and Miss Vida went to Innisfree, when I would go to their house, when I would leave the house, I would always go and I would get in front of Brother Vernon and I would say, Brother Vernon, would you pray for me? Why? Because I knew his prayers were powerful and effective. James 5, 16, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Also, when you look at those places, it's just powerful and effective. That scripture meant so much to me when I was at a time of bad health. But I always saw that in Brother Bert. Listen, can I tell you this? You always want righteous men to pray for you. And that's what I saw in uh, Brother Burns. So we're going to celebrate a few things, uh, if that's okay, with you this morning. Three attributes about his life that I think is worthy of celebrating. Not, not jump up and down, cheer, celebrate, but celebrate from the standpoint that one, even though this is a tough day on us, it's a great day for Brother Vernon. Right? And he, even though we, you know, we're, we're here and we still have the aches and pains of this life, but finally, Brother Vernon can raise his hands to God and say, glory to Jesus. Woo, it's a good day for Brother Vernon. Right? Can I tell you that Brother Vernon can finally scratch his own nose? Okay, amen. It's a good day. It's a tough day for us. It's a day with tears. It's a day with... It's a, it's a tough day. Because that fleshly body's not here with us doing those things that we remember him doing... But the thing that Brother Vernon did right was at a very appropriate time, the Holy Spirit put a calling on his life, and he said yes and surrendered his life to Christ. And past that time, God did a work on the inside of him, and he's been doing all those works all those years that culminated Saturday night when he took his last breath here on earth and was, <laughs> was lifted off to glory to be with Jesus in a place made especially for him. Good day for Brother Vernon. So I can't... I can't fully be sad today, can you? I can't fully mourn today. I've known Brother Vernon now for about 15 years. Many of you have known him all your life, so I'm, I'm jealous of that fact. But you don't have to know Vernon even a day to know how special that good man is. So today is a day that Brother Vernon can celebrate. And I believe he is. First thing we'd celebrate is we'd celebrate his faithfulness, wouldn't we? Brother Vernon wasn't a perfect man, and neither are we. 
but he served a perfect God. And that man was faithful. He was here whether he felt like it or not. Even in the nursing home, he would be talking about how, I think I can get to church there Sunday. I'm not sure, but I think I can. I'll get sharing with them. They'll bring me to church, right? And if he came to church, he'd be sitting right there. And if you got in that spot, he'd go sit somewhere else. You know, years ago, I, I, I made a statement to our congregation that we don't have any reserved seats in our church. And if somebody comes and sits in your seat, go sit in the floor. Brother Vernon would sit in the floor. He, he just would. That's the kind of man that he, that he is. I, I'm reminded of, of um, Paul's letter to Timothy there in Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, where it says, I've been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. We, we saw that in the life of Brother Vernon. It's a great example for us. In, in, in John chapter 1, verse 10, the Bible says uh, he, and it's talking about Jesus, was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world didn't recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own didn't receive him. Yet, to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent nor of human decision or husband's will but born of God I, I, can I go back to verse 10 just for a second and show you something I think is real cool uh, the Bible says in verse 10 he was in the world and though the world was made through him the world did not recognize him I think it's important that we as Christian people allow the world to see Christ through us I mean when we're in our best the world will recognize the Savior through our walk and that's the faithfulness of Brother Vernon. Uh, I didn't know the old Brother Vernon, but the new Brother Vernon lived as a witness of what God had done in his life. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, If anyone is in Christ, he is a what? Are you with me this morning? He's a new creation. The old is gone, the new has I, I knew that man to be a faithful man of God. It showed in his life, and it showed in his family. Um, the young man that just played with me up here, many of you know him, that's Adam Franklin. He's one of my fine young deacons here in this church, and he, he's got a passel with kids, and all those kids, they love, they, they're a mess, too. Ooh, they're a mess. But they, but they love them from Jesus, though. And I tell you what, that's, that's the footprint a bottom a burning tar hunter going on down through the generations. What a great thing it is. Not only can we celebrate his faithfulness, but we can also celebrate that man's witness. Um, Philippians chapter one verse three uh, says this, and I can certainly say it about Brother Vernon. It says, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. Because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he, who, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Now, Vernon's day in Christ Jesus was Saturday night. He completed that great work that he started in Brother Vernon. Verse 7 says, it's right for me to feel this way about all of you since I have you in my heart. But whether I'm in chains or defending the, uh, or, and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how long, uh, how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And then he says, and this is my prayer. Paul says, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. That you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, and certainly you could say your day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Now, for you Bible scholars out there, I know that most of the time we talk about the day of Christ being that day that Jesus comes again. I get that, and I know that, but I also can put into the same text here that there'll be a day for all of us when Christ will come for us. He'll come for us and he'll collect the eternal of us just like he did uh, for Brother Vernon just a few days ago and took him to a place that was made especially for him. And that day was his day in Jesus. And because of all the things that he's done on this earth, we can remember him in a, in, as, a, as a man of great witness. Um, if, if we were to try 
to describe Brother Vernon in one word. It, it'd be hard, but I'll use a few. He was giving. We loved his grandkids. I remember when I first got here, there was this real big green machine in his backyard. It was something he cooked up with Russell to, to spray grass on the side of hills. Y'all remember that? I don't know who thought that up, but it must have been a good idea because Brother Vernon bought right in. He was ready to go. Right? I mean, he, that's the kind of guy he was. Um, uh, what else? He was, he was sacrificial. Uh, he was hard working. When he couldn't walk, he had a garden the size of most people's yard. I could see him and him and Miss Vida out there now. I don't know how Miss Vida got down, much less got back up. But she was out there all day long working in that garden. They, those people, all they knew was hard work. He was loving, and, and uh, you know, he was hard headed. No, no, wait, that's not Brother Bernie. That's Sharon. It's hard headed. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to get those words mixed up. <laughs> Brother Vernon was a little hard headed too. Uh, he he he. Uh, he was the man that knew what he wanted, and he went after it. And um, sometimes um, he got banged up a little bit because of it. But bless his heart, if there was something to do, he wanted to be a, a part of it. But the thing, the word I think I'd most describe Brother Vernon, it was he loved. He loved people. He loved his pastor. <laughs> he couldn't remember that, that one day. But I still think he loved me. I do. I know he. I know. I don't. I know that that man loved. Me. I've been here. I don't know, 14 years soon, and uh, never had a cross word with, with Brother Vernon. Brother Vernon was always uplifting. He was always precious, and he was always the one that was putting air underneath my wings to make sure that I succeeded in the church. And he was proud of me, and he was proud to call me his pastor. And I want to do this. I am proud to call him my friend, my friend. Deacon. He's one of our deacons. When I first got here, he had just retired. He was, we, we called him Deacon Emeritus, right? But his, but he had great, he had great wisdom and insight. I, so I, I tell you a story. I don't know why this happened. I, I'm not sure why I did it. Um, I've not done it since. Um, not sure why I did it then. But Brother Vernon was in rehab uh, down on Wagon Wheel, Wheel Road in a, in, a, in a rehab place in a hospital there. And gosh, this has been 10 years ago. And he'd kind of give up on us. Remember that? He just kind of gave up. And Sharon said, Johnny, I need to go by and visit with him. He's just kind of give up on us. And man, if he don't, if he don't get himself back together, he, that man's going to die. I, I remember that. I go talk to him and I'm standing there. And I had, uh, at the time, my, my uh, stepfather-in-law with me. And, and uh, we were standing there and I couldn't get through to him. And so... I got, I got up in the bed on top of that man. I put a knee on either side of me and a hand on his pillow, and I got about this close to his face. I'm sorry, family, for doing that. I apologize. And I said, Brother Vernon, you're like a daddy to me. If you don't get better, you're going to die, and I ain't ready for it. In my best Wooster voice. <laughs> and I'm not ready for it. I need you to be Brother Vernon again. <laughs> I think he had a heart attack right there. <laughs> From that very moment on, Brother Vernon says, okay. He got air back in his lungs again, and he said, I'll work hard, and I'll get out of here. I appreciate that. I love Brother Vernon. Don't worry, I won't do that to you. <laughs> but we celebrate his faithfulness. We celebrate his witness, and here's the best. We celebrate his Savior. Um, Brother Vernon knew who saved him. And, and he, he, he knew it wasn't anything to do with him, but he knew that it was all about his Savior. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, Paul says this, and I, I think this, rec this describes Brother Vernon really well. It says, for I'm already being poured out like a drink offering. Let me tell you what a drink offering is. When they were... Um, when they were making sacrifices back in the day of Christ, they were burning flesh. Can you imagine the smell of that? And so they would have this, this concoction that smelled really good, and they would pour that liquid into the fire, and it would put off a sweet aroma. That was called a drink offering. I can imagine that Brother Vernon, in his life, is a drink offering to Christ. Can't you? 
He goes on to say, and the time has come <laughs> for my departure. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but all of you too. It doesn't say that, but I think it should. But also to all who have longed for his appearing. Today's a good day. Don't, don't let your mourning overshadow the fact that this is a good day. It's a good day for this family. It's a good day for this church. It's a good day for all of you who knew him. And mostly, it's a good day for my good friend, Vernon Todd Hunter. Let's pray. Father, in the quietness of this moment, we want to celebrate the fact that you are so good to us. We want to celebrate my, my good friend, dear brother Vernon, and Lord, just now, Lord, as we think about all the things that we learned from him, all the experiences that we had with him, Lord, we want to lift him up to you and say, take this man from us, Lord, and, and, and do with him what you have always promised that you would. Lord, thank you for this time we have together. We pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Are you up for one more song? Standing on the promises of God. 